In this topic, we will cover what additional uh, things affects Gizmo can provide you inside the ZBrush. So let's go to the Gizmo option over here, any one of it. Okay, now we are back here. Let me turn this off to Gizmo. Okay, now the first thing uh, I want to tell you over here is that the Gizmo can inflate your 3D model or sub tool just like uh, you are filling air inside a balloon. To do that, if you're on PC, you have to press Control, or if you're on Macs, you have to have press uh, Command, and then scale it up by press uh, by clicking and dragging the scale option. Like suppose if I will press Control, I can uh, scale it up, and you can see the air is filling inside. Okay, but if I will go to the negative value, okay, let me undo that. If I will go to if I will press uh, Control and go to the negative value, it is uh, doing the opposite, it is taking the air out of it. Okay, so this is how it will help you to create something this sort of an effect like filling, air filling effect, or air pulling out of it. You can say that. Now, other thing that Gizmo can provide you is by giving you primitive, you can make primitive in your. Uh, ZBrush using the Gizmo. How you can do that? You just have to press this gear icon and it will give you different primitives over here. Now you can choose any primitive you want, but it will replace the sub tool that you have selected. So uh, I will replace it, doesn't matter. So suppose if I want to use a sphere 3D, if I will click over here, okay. Now, what it says that the mesh is composed of multiple subdivision levels. Delete or freeze the subdivision level and try again. So, what I will do over here is that I will simply select this one, okay, and go to my subdivision level just to see. Uh, I have here, okay, this one. Let me lower it down the subdivision level. And then I will go back here, click on this, and then Sphere 3D. Okay, uh, it's still saying because I think I need to delete the subdivision here, or I can freeze the subdivision level here. Now let's try. Now I got this sphere over here, and you can see that it has replaced the head over here. Now, if the head is replaced, I don't want to see the eyes also. I will hide the eyes as well. Now, you can see it has given me this uh, 3D sphere. And you can see there are some cones over here. Now, what are these cones? If you hover over these cones, it will give you sizes. Now, what are these sizes? These are the attributes of these, uh, like this sphere. Suppose this is the size 5. Now, what size is that? If you click on it and drag it, you can see this is the size of this part of my sphere, the top part of the sphere. Okay, if I will go back, this is the size of the back part of my sphere. Okay, and then I have two more here. One is H divide. What is this? This is the subdivision of height. So you can see the height subdivision is increasing or decreasing. I can go, uh, I can increase or decrease this. And this is the V divide. It means like uh, it is the this area, maybe the width. You can say that if I will increase or decrease, you can see that it is decreasing and increasing the division of uh, the subdivision of the uh, vertical or V. I don't know. Maybe it is for the width. Or UV, as you know, in the UV. So, this is how you can easily work on your primitive inside the ZBrush by using the Gizmo. Also, if you want to see the wireframe while you are changing, you can press Shift F on your keyboard. Okay, it will turn on the wireframe. So, you can easily see the wireframe here. Actually, uh, if you are changing and applying any changes, it automatically turns on the wireframe. Uh, 
you can say uh, temporarily. Now, as you know, when I brought this primitive, it replaced the head which I was using. But if you don't want to replace any object, you just have to duplicate that, then bring it in your primitive. So it will not, uh, you can say, it will not replace your currently selected object. Now let's do one thing. Uh, if I will go to this primitive here, and then there is this uh, gear icon. If I click on it, it will again give me uh my primitives here and there is a gizmo 3d if i click on the gizmo 3d it will bring back my gizmo and i can use my gizmo again okay so to bring it back into center i will press alt um, and also alt and this one so it will uh you know kind of uh, uh reset this but if i want to make another primitive i can go here choose any other primitive so it will replace uh, my existing primitive so suppose if i want to go to the, the cylinder 3d if i click here and now i have my cylinder 3d here and you will notice that it have now a different uh you can say uh like a uh, attributes i have inner radius so i can make uh like a cube okay let me undo that and then i have this subdivisions different sort of subdivision over here okay and if i go back here i have here another cylinder which is not a 3d cylinder okay the one that i just made was cylinder 3d this is poly cylinder if i click on the poly cylinder what it says is that customize now if i will click on the customize i can customize this poly cylinders you can see i have x divide z divide this is the subdivision level okay you can see that i can easily subdivide them okay and then i have here customize now let's see what does the customize mean over here i can click here and then i will see there are a lot of different options down okay i have a bend arc i have deformer i have a flatten and all these options here suppose if i will click on deformer it give me it will give me this deformation option over here okay where i can i will have these different cones now this cone is a uh, y symmetry this cone is what this is something different okay this is y divide okay this is z symmetry and these are some uh, points over here so if i click on these points and move around you can see that I can reshape them. Okay. And if I will click on these, what it will do is that it will uh, change the subdivision level. Okay. Of my uh, like work over here. And it will produce like symmetry basically. Okay. That's what it is doing. And if I'm doing some kind of changes here, suppose I will do this change, okay? And I don't want this change to be there. I can also uh, reset them. If I will go here, you can see there are some reset options here. I can press reset, okay? So it will reset the deformer that I used last. Or if I have used multiple deformers, like suppose rotate smooth taper, and I want to reset all of them so I can do full reset. So reset will only reset the last one that I have used the deformer. Full reset will reset all of it. So I just used only, I have only used only one. So I can just press reset. But if I'm satisfied, I can press accept. And this will become uh, my uh, collapsed or, you know, just like in Maya when you delete history. So this will become... A primitive itself just like this now i can go back here i cannot reset anymore but i can add some more uh option over here okay suppose inflate if i will go here so i have different uh inflations uh like cones over here for different sides if i want to inflate top or bottom okay now if i will do this and go back here if i don't like this i can press reset and it will reset the last one and if you want you can you have uh, some more options over here okay i have bend curve 
so i have these points here i can easily bend these okay i can twist them to score because if you don't know what the that does these cones do you can just go over it it will show you what they can what they can do okay this is smooth to smooth it up or down smooth levels okay now there are a couple of more here this is curved it if i will move it up or down it will give me curve points so there are some these curve points now i can have curve points uh here let me change the axis you can change the axis from here and add some curve point let me change the axis of the curve points or Okay, so I can change the axis here because I don't want the curve points to be on the front side. I want this curve point to be some other side. I want it to be on the other side. Yeah, here. So I changed the uh, axis. Now I can go move around these, cur uh, these curve points as I want. Okay, and you can see it is creating some sort of a uh, nice organic. Uh, shape over here so I can move them around and I can create something out of it okay and also I can smooth it up I can smooth it with this smoothing a uh, cone so if you will drag it up or down it will smooth your cone the way you want it to be if you want more smoother you can go uh, much more higher or less higher okay and I can keep on doing that okay and then I can also undo it. So this is how very nicely you can make a lot of primitives with the help of the Gizmo. And if I'm satisfied with this, I will just go accept. And it will be uh, there collapsed just like the history is deleted. If you're, use, if you're using uh, Maya, if you know how Maya works, so basically when you delete the history in Maya, it's the same thing. Now inside uh, the Gizmo, we have one more thing that is uh, known as the sticky mode. So if I will press on the sticky mode, what it will do is that if I will uh, move my object, like suppose Z axis, okay, so it will move my object on the Z axis, but my Gizmo will uh, snap back to its position, okay, like I'm keep on moving this. Now just see, the gizmo is moving with that, but as soon as I will stop moving, it will go back to its position, back to its position. Okay, suppose if I will go to uh, x-axis, it's, uh, it's moving along with, uh, with my object, with my 3D model here, but as soon as I will stop, the object will be moved, but my gizmo go back, uh, will go back to its, like, its original position, like it will snap back to where it was before. So this is the sticky mode. So I can turn off the sticky mode now. Now it will not snap. Okay, so this is how the sticky mode usually works. And sticky mode is, uh, you know, if you want to replace your object or you want to uh, offset your gizmo for some reason. So you can use the, uh, the sticky mode for that purpose. And then we have this lock mode. Now, what does the lock mode do? Lock mode will move the gizmo around without affecting the object. Like suppose if I will click on the lock mode and then try to move my gizmo. So the gizmo will start moving, but object will not move. Object will stay as it is uh, where my, uh, uh, like to its original position to uh, wherever it is, okay? So maybe I can move the gizmo uh, closer to my objects just like this. And once I'm satisfied, I can unlock it by clicking here and then it will be on my object. Same thing what I can do is that I can press Alt key on my keyboard, okay? And then I can press, uh, I can click, I can move uh, these, okay? by pressing the alt key and it will do the same thing okay so alt key will temporarily lock this and when i will leave my alt key it will go back to normal so i can do with the alt key on the uh, on the pc if i'm using or option key if i'm using the mac so with the help of the alt key i can also move around my objects here basically 
Okay. So this is it about the gizmo. This is how the gizmo will help you, and it provides you a lot of different uh, options over here. It's a quite handy and quite helpful tool. So I use gizmo a lot. Okay, especially when I'm working on the primitives. So it's quite handy. And if I'm uh, trying to, uh, you know, uh, transform my 3D models, like suppose if I have brought my eyes to my character and those eyes are not fitting well, so I will use Gizmo. I usually use Gizmo to fit the eyes by, by moving the eyes, to res by rescaling the eyes. So these kind of things I use uh, with the Gizmo. So I hope you have understood about the Gizmo. Thanks a lot everyone for joining my course and following up with me and if you have not subscribed to my channel so please subscribe to my channel also click on the bell icon so you can get the daily notifications and I will really appreciate if you will watch all my videos online without downloading them because I need all those watch time hours. Please just support me. Uh, keep on sharing my videos with your friends. Ask them also to subscribe because I will be coming up with a lot of new great tutorials and full courses. Also, don't forget to watch my online live streams and uh, watch the introductory video of the live stream. You can also click on this icon on the top right corner where you can find my live stream introductory video where I have explained about all my uh, schedule uh, that I'm will be working uh, on my live streams basically. Okay, guys, so take care and see you in the next topic or in the next chapter. So by the time, take care and keep subscribing, keep watching, and keep zebra.